Hi there, I'm Grant Stinchfield, live from the NRA's TV studios in Dallas. Right now, I want you to think about this. Barack Obama's eight years in office. It gives us a glimpse of what's to come if Hillary Clinton is elected president. As America's First Freedom Magazine points out, under Barack Obama, crime in our nation's biggest cities continues to rise. Just look at cities like Baltimore, Chicago, Oakland, all cities run by politicians with an anti-gun, soft-on-crime mentality. America's First Freedom Magazine puts it this way. While Hillary Clinton and her fellow elitists in positions of power either exempt themselves from the law or change the law after it's been passed to give themselves a loophole, they also impose more and more laws that punish law-abiding people while refusing to enforce existing laws against those who terrorize and traumatize our country. Hillary Clinton will only give us more of that. I'm tired of being told how to live my life by elitists who think they know better than me about what's right for me and my family. Well, we know what Carly Twisselman thinks about gun ownership, and she is at an amazing place. It's the Forward Movement Training Center in Boise, Idaho. Carly, it's great to have you on the show. It's great to be on. I'm so excited to be talking to you back in studio. That's right, I am in Boise, and we are at the Forward Movement Training Center, the same place where Autumn Parkin is filming uh, the latest series of Tips and Tactics. We actually have local law enforcement training right now. You can hear that. They're in a, a scenario village is what they call it. So it's a whole house built to practice attack scenarios. And so we want to point out too, Carly, that those are those are not real bullets they're firing. Those are training no, rounds. Actually, they are not real bullets. Um, they're Matt. This is Matt. He's one of the owners. Matt, what do you call those bullets that they're shooting? Uh, it's UTM, so it stands for the Ultimate Training Munition. Okay. So they don't actually fire anything. It's just a loud sound. So, right. so Matt, we're looking at the catwalk there and, and down to law enforcement coming in. I imagine you, you, you're going to put Carly through some tests and, and, and that later? Say that again, Greg. I, I said I imagine. Are you, gonna, are you Carly, going to go through some scenarios later? Well, I don't know. Enough. It's kind of intimidating, but he's been trying to get me to do it. They've been putting Autumn through some all um, the last couple, well, I guess the last 24 hours, and I got to witness some of that. I want to take you downstairs and show you the rest of this facility. Um, here's Autumn. She's making our latest series of tips and tactics. But they have a really neat place. It's like a little town in itself where you can practice all d different kinds of self-defense. So, so Carly, is it is it mostly law enforcement that's that's going through those scenarios, or do they bring so regular folks in, too? A lot of law enforcement today, but they also have um, it's civilian training as well. So you can sign up for a membership and come train with them and, and learn basically self-defense tactics. And, and I see they have the canine unit out there training as well. Sorry, one's... What was that? I said, I see they have the canine unit training as well. Yeah, they do. It's pretty neat uh, to see what they have to go through on a daily basis to, you know, be out there protecting us. And so they have a house on one side of you, and then it looks like, is, is it a little town that, that's, that's on your, over your shoulder? Is it a little town that's over your shoulder? Yeah, so they have like, the house scenario set up behind me that I was just standing on, and then... Over here, they have um, like a credit union and some other kind of store. And then they actually have a car over here where we were working yesterday and Autumn was doing a scenario where she was getting into her car and being attacked and how you would respond in that sort of situation. And it's kind of eye-opening because you, I, I wouldn't know what to do in that situation after watching what you what you need to be doing. So I want to start taking these courses. You know, I'm, I'm fascinated. One, Carly, it's amazing that you're able to concentrate uh, on doing this interview with us as all of this stuff, is, you know, guys going by <laughs> going by with, with AR-15s right behind you into what looked like the bank robbery going on. Hey, I'm curious, though, when you were doing the car scenario, they had a mom with her baby in the car. Is, is that right? And, and how to protect yes. themselves if it was a car jacking? Yeah, well, actually, so the scenario was she was putting her baby in the car and the attacker comes up from behind her and and pushes her, tries to push her inside of her own car to basically abduct her. And so we got Autumn right here. Autumn, how did that, how did it feel to go through that? It was scary. I mean, it feels very real, even though you know that you're in a scenario. 
your body's still processing all that. Mm -hmm. So it was just pretty intense to watch. So Autumn, you're obviously a, very well trained at all this as a pistol instructor, and and you know you've you've been through your own traumatizing experiences, which I'm sure has motivated you to get in, involved in all of this. I'm curious when you're in a car, your your baby's in the car with you, someone comes up behind you. How do you get to your gun? Do you recommend that people keep their gun on their waist? You know, mine is in my glove compartment. I'm not going to be able to get to my glove compartment if somebody surprises me. This is something you're going to see on yes. Tips and Tactics. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I, I choose to carry appendix. Um, it's it's different for everybody, but that's my choice. Um, I can access it, you know, easily with, with either hand, so that's, it's always something to take into account. Uh. And it was... Um, Something Matt was saying about forward movement training is, you know, you are being on the offense. So when you're being attacked, you don't take defense. You don't run away. You go towards your, I guess, attacker and try to defend yourself on the offense, I guess is how you would say it. Yes. And and again, you know, a firearm is a tool. You, you need to have other skill sets to be able um, to defend yourself. Yeah, and clearly training is the key to all of that. I mean, without practicing scenarios like that, you can't ex be expected to, to be able to perform. I mean, I would imagine even in that scenario, uh, Autumn, that your heart rate probably went through through your chest, and, and you know it's practice. Yes. That always happens every time. <laughs> every time. Well, that was something that went through the, the whole training um, technique like 10 times yesterday. And every time she was like, oh my gosh, my adrenaline is just on the you know, ceiling. I, my heart is pumping and it does it every single time. Every time. Yeah, every time. Well, we can't wait, wait to see tips and tactics and, and what you're shooting out there, Carly. It's, it's uh, amazing to watch it kind of live unfold as you're doing it. So I can't wait to see the final product. I know, I can't wait to see it either. It's been pretty neat out here. Hey, Autumn, Carly, thank you so much for sharing some time with us today. Thank you.